Alrighty then. This is part two of my little Cura series here about uh, multicolor printing with A10M, A20M, A10T, A20T, or any other dual extrusion hot end, really. Doesn't have to be a mixing hot end for this type of print. There's a few different ways to print multicolor prints. You can just do a, a normal model like a vase or whatever with a gradient uh, that fades from one color to another. Or you can, in some slicers, set up ways for it to switch. Just switch extruders during the middle of the print so it kind of bands uh, make horizontal bands of color up through your model like a traffic cone for example or what most people are going to be wanting to do is take a model such as the lizard the gecko rather uh, like on the GTEC SD cards so that's the type of model we'll focus on today for this video so what you need is a STL that's already in separated into different parts several different STLs to make up the model that somebody has already uh, cut for this purpose and the reason is you have to be able to assign an extruder to each of these separate parts that you want printed with that extruder or that the color that's in that extruder. So, first things first, uh, in part one we went through and we set Cura up for the A10M. Um, we set our material colors just so we can see, you'll see why this comes in handy in just a few minutes, uh, to have a separate material color. And we set up uh, our basic settings uh, for 0.2 millimeter layer height. So now we need to load a model. I found this lizard on Thingiverse. I can uh, put the link to it in the video, give credit to the designer. Um, so we select our all our parts. You'll see this three parts. Um, open. <coughs> And there we go. There's all the parts that are going to make up our model. The way they're grouped, uh, everything here is one part. Everything here is one part. And you see the eyes. The eyes are why it's three pieces. We could uh, do this as a three color print and set up a mix to print the eyes or one of these other parts as a mix. Or if you have the A10T, the T model, you could, uh, of course, select the eyes to print with a totally different extruder but for the purpose of today we're just going to do this two colors so in order to select which part of this model is going to print with which extruder you simply select it see this part is selected and we come over here and you can see when you hover over this print selected model with extruder one so that's what we want I clicked it you didn't see anything happen and that's because it just happened to import in our extruder one color so to go and select this model and we want to print this one with extruder two there now you see why the colors make a difference it's going to help us keep track of which extruder is printing which part of the model um, it doesn't have anything to do with the, the colors you have loaded unless you set it up that way all right, now we need the eyes. We need the eyes to print, I guess, uh, we're just gonna do two colors, so we need to put it, group it with one of these. I want it to print with extruder two. I want it to print the same color as there. So we go over and go ahead and click on the two. And now we see the eyes have changed to the same color as this. So we know that all of this is gonna print with extruder two. All of this is gonna print with extruder one. So the next thing we have to do is put all the pieces together there are hotkeys to do this, but I don't take the time to learn them because so many different slicers, so many different programs, the hotkeys are all different. <laughs> so I use the drop-down menus for most everything. What we want to do is select all, 
So all the models are selected. And then merge models. There. Now it's all one piece, but it changed funny colors. Why? Well, that's because the tail's hanging off over the print bed, so it's telling you it can't print. So we need to move him. And we're gonna move him way over here to this edge instead of being right in the center. But now you can see get rid of that now you can see that well the feet disappeared you didn't take care of that first the reason it did when they uh, merged the models the model origin was probably a little low so it's not sitting on the bed anymore come back up to edit and we select a range moved it back to the center but you can see it moved it up on top of the bed which is what we wanted now we have all the feet going to be printing I'm going to move him back over here so, everything that's in green is going to print with extruder 1. Everything that's in red is going to print with extruder 2. That's why it's so handy to have uh, to set these colors up differently so you can see this. Now, the reason I moved him way over here to the side, you can see the little gray area here. That's the prime tower. We want our prime tower. We don't want it way back here in the corner. We want it right up close to the model. Uh, and the reason for that is we don't want to, well, it, every time you go to purge, of course you have to travel all the way from the model to the purge tower, do the purge, travel all the way back. One, that takes a lot of time, even if your uh, travel is set up to, like I have at 120 or 150 millimeters per second, but when you get into a big tall model, all that traveling time you could have an hour or two just in travel <laughs> so and the other reason is the further the nozzle has to travel to go to the purge tower and back that's also time that material can start oozing out of the nozzle and create stringing or the little bit that oozes off and hardens by the time it gets back will kind of stick to the side of the print and then you'll have all these little now, porcupine stubble or whatever you want to call it sitting on blobs sitting on the side of the print so we need to move our prime tower right up here in the center so we go down to dual extrusion here it is and you can see the prime tower X and Y positions here so we want to move it up the y-axis to about halfway this is an a10m so 117.5 is pretty close to the center uh, Cura seems to use one edge of the prime tower as its locator it doesn't have to be exact we just want to move it up here a bit move it up uh, just a little bit more Come on, go back there. I went the wrong direction, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> okay. Like I said, this doesn't have to be exact. We're going to put it there and call it good enough. I want it a little bit closer to the model still, so we'll move it back here on the y-axis a bit. There. Now that's pretty close also noticed I put it off the back of the model hopefully you can get your retraction and temperature and everything dialed in so you don't have to worry about stringing but this way if you do get stringing when you're moving from the model to the prime tower all the strings here are kind of going in the same direction so it would make them easier to clean off you wouldn't want it coming off over the face um, of course depending on the model uh, you want this kind of orientated so if there are strings they're either on the back side of a model where you won't see them or in a spot where they'd be easy to clean so that's why I kind of chose this direction okay now we have everything pretty much set up um, and in part one I told you that we'll set uh, the prime tower minimum volume in this case both the same they're set at 60 cubic millimeters which I have just from experience I know the filaments I'm going to use that should be fine 
and the prime, prime tower size. It's in orange. Don't worry about it being in orange. I don't know why Kira says has it in orange. It's just fine. But we need to make sure that our diameter is large enough to accommodate this much purge. So what we need to do is slice it. And once it's sliced, we can see in the preview how everything's going to look. Okay, it's sliced. We go to preview. And there we go. There's our prime tower. And again, you see everything looks like it's going to be printed fine. And we have quite a large hole in the middle of our prime tower. That's okay. You don't have to make it so there's a small hole. You know, just as long as there's some space here in the middle is what you're looking for. It's not going to take um, an excessive amount of time. If you want it to be smaller, just for the sake of it, it's going to purge the same amount of material, in other words, no matter how large you make this. So we could make this a little bit smaller. We can go to 30. 30 millimeters diameter. Slice it again. And... When it's done here, it'll pop back up and show us. Okay, so the hole is significantly smaller. It's still going to purge the same amount of material. I suppose it might take a little less time because it's less distance traveled. But it has to purge the same amount. So, preview is a pretty important tool to use. To check on things, you don't want to start a print and then realize that you didn't get the extruder set the way you wanted or that the prime tower isn't big enough um, or that you forgot to put in infill <laughs> so you need to use that and I see I remember saying that uh, I use brim pretty much for everything even though I don't need it in the case of the lizard I mean it'll still be fine it's not hard to clean off but it's really not necessary I know I don't need it, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the brim, make it a skirt instead, which is just going to draw one outline, one outline around the entire model, including the prime tower, and that'll make cleanup, especially between the toes, easier there. So that is ready to print. I don't need to go back over these settings. I'm going to go ahead and print it with the settings we put in in uh, part one of this series. Uh, except for what you've seen me change here today. I'm going to go ahead and print it this way and we'll see the result. Uh, the next little video, I don't know, it's probably going to be about the prime tower itself because it's more more stuff about this that would be handy to uh, to know uh, like if you change the layer size the layer height is going to affect not the volume the volume will stay the same because what we're doing is just putting enough material through the nozzle to clean out the old color to start the new one but when we lower the layer height this diam the diameter of the tower will have to be bigger I'll show you that in another video but for right now Hopefully this uh, clears up a little confusion about how to go ahead and print multiple colors. Again, if you had the A10T or A20T or wanted to do the eyes, for example, in a different color of mix, um, then you can go ahead and do that. But this is our little quick and simple thing on how to set up a two-color print in Cura for the A10M, A10T, A20, etc. Uh, hope that uh, hope that helps you out a bit. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.